Hello, welcome to this week's devotions. We're looking forward to that day when we can have a big celebration as a church and sing and play instruments and be together and welcome our community. For now, there are restrictions on the number of people who can gather and singing and instrument playing are not considered safe at this stage. This should have been the weekend when we welcomed the West Midlands Fellowship Band to Guernsey. We had a fantastic weekend with them in 2015 and we were looking forward to renewing friendships and having them share their Christian joy and praise with us and the whole island community. But that's not been possible this year. In the Salvation Army, music is very much at the heart of our worship and praise of God. Some people are gifted musicians and they make playing their instruments look so easy. Yet to get to a standard like that takes hours and hours of dedication, commitment and practice. Whilst many people are missing singing, singing is right at the heart of worship. And often songwriters are able to write verses that describe just how we are feeling and married to a suitable tune, the words become a song that seek to draw out of us our expression of praise and adoration to our God who has done so much for us. When I listen to music, especially Christian music, I know almost instantly if there is a connection. More often than not, songs and tunes touch my soul and take me into the presence of God. Whether they be ancient hymns or contemporary gospel songs or pieces of instrumental music, when I tune my heart, I'm singing not just with my voice, but my heart and soul leap for joy and praise too. Today's Bible reading is Psalm 98, and from the message it says, Sing to God a brand new song. He's made a world of wonders. He rolled up his sleeves. He set things right. God made history with salvation. He showed the world what he could do. He remembered to love us, a bonus to his dear family Israel. Indefatigable love. The whole earth comes to attention. Look, God's work of salvation. Shout your praises to God, everybody. Let loose and sing. Strike up the band. Round up an orchestra to play for God. Add on a hundred voice choir. Feature trumpets and big trombones. Fill the air with praises to King God. Let the sea and its fish give a round of applause with everything living on earth joining in. Let ocean breakers call out, encore! and mountains harmonise the finale. A tribute to God when he comes, when he comes to set the earth right. He'll straighten out the whole world. He'll put the whole world right and everyone in it. Amen. Well, this is a psalm of praise, anticipating the coming of God to rule his people. It is a reminder that God has done great things and he will continue to do them, revealing his salvation and revealing his righteousness to all nations. Of course, Jesus fulfilled this anticipation when he came to save people from their sins and he will come again to judge the world, for God is both perfectly loving and perfectly just. Christ paid for our sins and the wonderful truth we come to realise is that God sees us as beautifully perfect and righteous in him. For Christ died to save us and rose triumphantly that we could take our place in his eternal kingdom. This means that the righteousness of God is not against us but for us. And that means we can live life daily with tremendous joy in our souls. We can burst into jubilant song with music because our God loves us to the core. The psalm gives us the imagery of even trees and fish praising God. 
with rivers and mountains clapping and singing. And then we are reminded that God is holy. The Hebrew word means literally to be completely set apart, which tells us that to say God is holy means there is none like him, that he is infinitely above us and all things in power, perfection and righteousness. When we apply this word to the likes of us, ordinary people, it means that we belong wholly to God. We don't serve him or worship him with half measures, but with our whole heart and being. For the Christian church to be holy means it should be radically different. The early Christians stuck out in their society, society because of their integrity, honesty, their sympathy and forgiveness, their desire to live right and their generosity. They were holy as they sought to reflect Jesus Christ. And so as I think about that all myself, I like the image of a band or an orchestra or a choir. On their own, musicians are all individuals. They all have a part. Some may be weak in their part as a soloist, but when played within the context of the whole group of musicians, their part becomes beautiful and strong and helps to make up the whole. But what happens when we listen to music or song and we hear that one musician or vocalist that sticks out? Maybe they're out of tune or a bit sticky on their notes, or they don't hold the beat and are behind or ahead of the other musicians. Until that individual plays or sings the music in front of them and follows the beat of the conductor, they will always be out of sync with the other. And it's like that with our lives. Yes, when we are out of sync with Jesus, life doesn't take on a rhythm or a beat that is aligned with God. We're like the musician who's out of tune or not keeping the beat. It's like when we learn to sing or play an instrument. We make a few noises. We use our breath, but not necessarily in the right way. We learn a few chords or harmonising notes, but there's not one chord or note that will fit with the melody all the time. Indeed, trying just to play or sing the melody can also be a huge challenge to overcome. Yet, with practice, when we keep trying and trying, eventually we learn what note goes where and the music starts to take shape and put together with all the musicians, the music can be wonderful. When we step out with God, knowing he is with us, knowing we are loved, reading our Bibles and then thinking what that teaches us about our pattern for living, and then taking steps to change our behaviour, finding those ways of reacting and responding as people who demonstrate that we are rooted in God, make all the difference to our unity with him and other Christians. We can't run ahead of God, and it's not good for us to be out of step or lagging behind him when he's leading us. But when we first come to Jesus, and we are hungry for the love of God and the scriptures that draw us close to him, then after a while, when his love has made us strong and confident and secure, then we're ready to add a few more notes and let God lead us to even greater things. We know that the West Midlands Fellowship Band were going to play lots of lovely music this weekend that would stir us in our worship and praise of God. And one piece they were going to play was one of my favourites, the band selection His Guardian Care by Lieutenant Colonel Ray Stedman Allen. Right throughout this music, there are reminders that God is with us all the time, that it is he who anchors us, that we can count on him in every situation of life, that God knows us and knows all about the storms that try to oppose us. But the most wonderful reminder of all is that God is still on the throne. The words of that chorus remind us that God is still on the throne, 
and he will remember his own. Though trials may press us and burdens distress us, he never will leave us alone. God is still on the throne, and he will remember his own. His promise is true. He will not forget you. God is still on the throne. When we try to live our lives in step with Jesus and his Holy Spirit, we are ever so much aware of the truth of this promise of God. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for your word to us. May we not be hearers only, but may we learn to live out this word more and more each day. Help us to see in our own lives any ways in which we have fallen out of step. By your spirit and with the help of our brothers and sisters in Christ, guide and empower us so that we can be the people you intend us to be. May the fruit of your spirit be evident in us, in abundance to your glory and praise. Make us know more surely than we know anything that we belong to you because of your grace given to us in Jesus. Father God, bless and keep us. May your face shine upon us and may you be gracious to us. May you turn your face toward us and give us your peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. God bless you.
Oh, yeah.